Hi, folks. Welcome to Gun Guys. Uh, Bill Wilson, Wilson Combat here. Um, I'm here with my old buddy Ken Hackathorn again. And today we're going to talk about uh, training drills. You know, Ken and I, through the years, we both developed lots of training drills. Uh, and we're going to discuss kind of our philosophy of uh, what we're trying to test with some of these drills and how we feel uh, the importance of some of the training is. Welcome, Ken. Thank you. You know, it's kind of interesting, Bill. Both you and I have spent a lot of time in this practical shooting game. And uh, I know you've certainly spent a lot of time developing different skill drills. And uh, I have over the years. You know, uh, it's amazing to me how many people come to me and say, well, how do you do this? How do you come up with the idea? And what I always tell them, and I'm sure it's the same with you, is you identify either deficiencies or requirements that you want to achieve. And you figure out, well, how do I practice this? How do we get to where I want to be performance-wise? And I think the big thing you and I both saw was um, a lot of guys say, well, I'm really good. Well, how do you judge good? you got to have well, a standard. Most of the people say when I'm really good, that means they're really fast. Yeah. <laughs> Not that they That's hit what, fast, but yeah. they, that they shoot fast. And, and the thing I ran into a long time ago was I looked at, you know, what do you identify the skills that, you want your students to be able to perform to what level and in the training world you know depending on what the market i was doing whether it was law enforcement military or the private sector you realize that for example in the military there the ability to do say transitions from a long gun to a handgun is a real important skill yeah. and you may go over to the private sector and the ability to shoot from concealment is really important so you build a a training drill to test those facets of the of mm -hmm. it. And so when a guy says, I can do a, a uh, one-shot presentation uh, and do five of them in a row and, and have my times averaging one and a half seconds with good hits, that's a good skill drill to base it on. Uh, and I think we all kind of go back to, and when we got started, that probably the most famous skill drill in, in, in the world is the El Presidente. Yeah. And Jeff Cooper created that, and it was kind of an interesting story. And you know, he was training the Palace Guard of, of, in Guatemala. And uh, when they left, he said, "Give us something to practice. So we can stay good, Mr. Cooper." And, and Colonel Cooper said, "Look, you got to practice a lot of things, but no, being bureaucrats, we want one." So he kind of on the fly came up with this El Presidente drill, and said, "You practice that." And of course, back in that day. If you hit anything on the sole of that target, it was a good hit. And he had a big, about a 12-inch circle. It was the what the I call it an X ring. If they were in mm -hmm. there, that was better. But if you could shoot an El Presidente in tick, 10 seconds or less from concealment, you were considered good to go. And yeah, with, with was just hits on the target. Yeah, hits on the target. Now that's changed a lot of the years. Although you and I both know, if you shoot a a valid El Presidente at 10 meter, 33 feet, and the targets are uh, nine feet apart, edge to edge. It's still not the easiest. It's, mm -hmm. I see. I saw a guy. You're gonna love. I saw something on YouTube of some young man, and he was bragging about his four second El Presidente, and he had like three steel targets. I swear they weren't that far apart, mm -hmm. and he couldn't have been more than five yards away. Mm -hmm. And he was fast, man. He did like a, you know, three point eight. Completely missed a target twice, but he was bragging about his time. Yeah, you know, and it looked like you threw gravel at the at the targets. And I remember thinking, but what you've done and I've done is we've taken things. Say, okay, I want my guys to be able to do shoot on the move, and with all the ranges of motions. Well, why not build a skill drill where they have to perform, and and we can base the pass or fail system or the levels of skill mm -hmm. upon their hits and their time, and. Uh, it's amazing to me, a lot of people don't even seem to be able to do this, but for you and I, it's pretty easy. If we identify, hey, there's an issue here we need to address, you've been great at picking up. I mean, you're, the Bill Drill, by the way, now is an internationally famous skill drill. Bill Wilson came up with a Bill Drill probably how many years ago? Oh, that was that was like in the early 80s, something yeah. like that. Yeah, and everywhere you go, everybody wants to know. And I hear some pretty, what I think is bogus Bill Drill figures, but bottom line is, I mean, I tell people back in the day with the equipment we were using, if you could draw and put six rounds in the A zone of a USPSA target in three seconds or less, you were considered pretty good. Oh, yeah. I, I still think you are. 
Yeah. You know, with, with real gear. Yeah. I mean, the, the, and now the you've got two second stuff is usually with race guns. Yeah. Stuff and and now you've come up recently. I remember here a couple of years ago, you sent me your five by five drill, and that's actually evolved now into a IDPA classifier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's it's a real quick, easy way quick, easy. to twenty five to, to get a good base baseline yeah. of how well. And when you get see. done, and you tally your score, you can pretty well tell where you're at. Mm -hmm. So I think the basis, the skill drill that a lot of people don't get is it's not designed to be fun. It's not designed to see how fast you can go. It's designed to, to measure valid skills. And I tell people, if, if the skill drill doesn't have any virtue to it, uh, you're probably practicing the wrong thing. Well, I'm a big believer that you need to pick a handful of drills. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can be maybe as little as three that those are your benchmark drills. You know, like like for me, I, you know, it's a five by five, and I have my, my CHP drill, which you know, comprehensive handgun proficiency drill, which is the best drill I think I've ever come up with, and and I and I do, uh, you know, usually an El Prez or something like that, and I know what times and scores I, you know, when I when I'm on my game, I know what kind of time and you know final score I'm going to get, including points down, and and so you just need to shoot them every now and then to see if you're still kind of got, yeah, see if you're still. Yeah. Where you need to be or you need to get back on the training yeah you know many many decades ago i did a, a same thing some folks it was a governmental program and said hey listen what would you recommend we practice what should we do and i came up with something i called the hack of thorn standards and it was like a 60 round course of fire and it was not easy i mean you, you really had to work to out of a possible 300 um it was not easy i mean a lot of the good guys i mean the i think the for a long time, uh, Larry Vickers, when he was still in the Army, he held the record on it. I can't remember what it was, but it was a, he had a good score. And it held for a long time until Jerry Barnhart shot a higher score. And I think, if I remember correctly, and I may be wrong, but I think at one point somewhere, Rob Lathan shot it and cleaned it. I mean, that, of course, yeah. only Rob Lathan can yeah. do that. But it's kind of like, here's a whole bunch of things you should be able to do, and you got to do them really well in order to measure up on this particular mm -hmm. course. Yeah. yeah, and I, I just recently, uh, I I remember I sent you a copy of my what I call the church security um, qualification. Mm -hmm. Actually, I call it the sheepdog qualification course. Remember, Senator, Dude, what do you think? And your comment back to me, I remember you said, "Well, too many starts, too many draws." Well, from a match administrator standpoint, you're 100 percent right. From a training standpoint, you were 100 percent wrong mm -hmm. in that the one skill those people really have to have down is to be able to make the draw the gun from concealment and fire and first it. shot's got to be a good one mm -hmm. so if anything out of 30 shots there's not enough draws in a sense because they don't practice mm -hmm. and so sometimes you go to force feed people through a skill drill things that make them get better whether they like it or not yeah and you and i both have seen people when you put out a particular skill drill they go oh man Oh, I don't like that. The reason I don't like it is because they don't do well at it. Well, especially if it's part time. I mean, oh, you, ta you take all the these these shooters these days that that are over the speed demons. They don't like to shoot a, a part time skill no. drill. They really no. don't because they. And they, and the other thing which you and I have seen, which I sometimes am just I shake my head at, is we live in a world shooting wise, and you and I have been around this for a while, where everybody wants to measure the performance on speed. Mm -hmm. They always say speed and accuracy. Well, actually, that should be the other way around. Yeah. I'll tell you an interesting, Bill. Many, many years ago, when Ipsic was just starting, and you remember Jim Cirillo was involved. Oh, yeah. And we were at some match, big match somewhere, and and I remember and I was a young hotshot, and I thought I was, you know, back then, if you were an A-class shooter, you were really good in those days. And I was an A-class shooter, and I thought, man, I, I know where I'm at, and I'm burning it down. And I remember asking Jim, when you were in those various shootouts you were in, how did you determine how fast you needed to shoot? I mean, what you know, the, the word that has evolved is called splits, which I find, I find when people start talking splits, you might want to push the delete button. Yeah. But I asked him, I said, how did, you, how did you judge the time? I mean, how did you figure out how fast you needed to shoot? And Jim gave me an answer, which was, to this day, I mean, an absolute gem. And I didn't want to hear it because I was one of those speed guys. But he said, you take whatever time it takes to make the shot. And he was 100% right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't care how fast you are, if you can't deliver the precision you want, um, 
you're, you're yeah. not going to get the results you want. And there's no question. Speed can't, you know, if you have to time a guy with a sundial, that's a problem. Yeah. But we get totally obsessed with time and face because the key mechanism, whether you shoot in almost any shooting sport today, is a timer. Yeah, but you can you can determine what accuracy you want. You know, like like to, to quantify your time. Okay, so like how precise do you want to be? Do you want do you want to try to keep all your shots in a four inch area, a six inch area, eight inch area? Is twelve inches good enough? Is it going to be a, a you know a, a slotted target to represent a, a spine shot or something like that? Yeah. You know, once you set your parameters of how how you know Changes. big 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 area you're trying to keep your shots in. Then, then kind of your speed adjusts to that. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, just like you said on the early El Presidente, just hang the hits on the target anyway, or like today, three gun stuff. Well, obviously, speed is pretty much paramount. That's mm -hmm. that. It's more important yeah. than, than accuracy. Well, but you, you go to the Bianchi Cup, it's the other end of the other end of the, end the spectrum. Yeah. You know, I think it's kind of interesting that I, I can remember some years ago when you were back in Ohio where I lived, and I was doing that first. Larry and I were doing that first 1911 anniversary mm -hmm. class. And we went to dinner and some discussions. Joyce was sitting there and we were talking about IDPA and changes and what we thought was going on. And Larry spoke up about you need to change the scoring from half second for every point down to a full second. And there were some people who said, oh, no, no, they would never accept that. Well, and that has come to pass. By the way, it, it pretty much didn't change a lot. You know, the guys that win, win. The guys that lose, lose. Yeah. But it really does make you pay a little bit more attention to oh. where your bullets are going. Oh, yeah. And I tell you, a little thing I've done lately, I'll take a roll of masking tape and put it up, take a marker and a circle and say, that's your target. And when I get real good at that, then you make a hole, make a circle with a hole in the center. And it fixes the problem about time you and I are talking about. Yeah. Uh, well, I like the drill that you do where you use the bullseye target, you know? Yep. The 10-shot 10, 10 drill that you do with the bullseye yeah. target. So what the bottom call, line. What do, you, what do you call that drill? Oh, the, uh, the ten or the uh, test? Yeah, the, the test, test drill. Yeah. Larry Vickers has made that famous. Yeah. The bottom line is, skilled drill should reflect the ability to measure standards of, of skills or or ability that you need to have. Well, that and also uh, to show you what you need to work on. Bingo. I mean, you, you know, you do the trained drills and you always shoot two-handed drill well, for example, and you fall apart when you shoot strong hand only or weak hand only, something like that. It shows you immediately, you know, where you need, need, to, need, work. To, need to work on that. Yeah. Hey, folks, if you want to learn more about this, subscribe to the Wilson Combat YouTube channel. And trust me, a lot of good tips, good information coming your way. Check it out. Mm -hmm.